Hey everybody, hope you're doing really well. So in this video we're going to take a quick look at the idea of a strop and what we use it for. So this video was provoked somewhat by another video that I saw and like YouTube has turned into these days there's a lot of uh, infomercials and cures to imaginary problems and this falls into the imaginary problem catalogue and what the suggestion was is that we should challenge the myth of using a strop and that it's not effective. Now, first of all, we've got to ask the question correctly. What do we use a strop for? So a strop is designed to take a edge that comes off the stones and add that extra level of refinement, just to take it up that little bit extra, make sure the burr has come off really nice and clean. Doesn't take a lot of effort there. You don't have to go rabid on it like there's a terrier digging a hole. Just, just enough to clean up the edge. And you can also use it to maintain an edge to an extent. To an extent and that's the key thing here to an extent so if I was using this chisel and I got it to a really high level of sharpness and I finished off on the straw and I was trimming across some end grain and it was a very soft end grain and I wanted to make sure that I kept a razor edge all the time I'd be watching my progress I'd be pushing pushing and all of a sudden I'm noticing the wood fibers are not cutting as clean as they used to I could come back to the strop freshen the edge up and I could go again and I might be able to keep that going for a few cycles of refreshing before I came back to the stone. Okay, what I couldn't use a strop for is I couldn't use my plane or my chisel to failure. And by failure, we mean you've taken your plane or your chisel to the point where it's not cutting properly anymore. To the point where there's damage on the edge. And I don't know how far some people even get with their tools. Some people might use a plane to the point where it should have been sharpened some time ago and at that point a strop will not help you okay a strop is not a stone okay you're going to need to take your edges back to your stone at that point raise a burr to remove any defects in the edge any chips rolls any wear you're going to need to remove that on your stones bring the burr up remove the burr finish on the strop and back into the tool okay that's what the strop is for now in the video i saw the setup was take a plane, use it heavily, and then revive one control on the stone, and then try and revive the other on the strop. And surprise to surprise, the strop couldn't revive the edge, and it's not going to. The, it, it's gonna be working too fine. And even how you set your strop up is gonna vary. The example I saw had a very thick, floppy strop covered in Tormek honing paste. When I say covered, it was swimming in it, okay? To me, that's not an effective strop. What I use here and what I demonstrate for fun isn't a strictly a strop. It's just a piece of clean pine with some finished nails cut up underneath, which grips into the bench. And I put a little bit of auto sole on there to cut through the edge and just to bring that extra bit of refinement when I need it. You could use leather stuck to a piece of timber and you could just put no abrasive on the leather at all and just use it bare, just to polish and refine, make sure that burr is completely gone. You could, if you want, add some of the abrasive you get in those wax sticks, so like the Jewelers Rouge, things like that. Put that on there, or some auto sole, and you just chase away the burr and remove it, okay? That's what a strop is for, and it's highly effective. You've got to remember that YouTubers now You'll, they'll put up a video and conveniently it'll be a tabloid headline but go to the description if that tabloid headline then links to products that they are demonstrating which they get a return for as an affiliate you can basically discount it as nonsense okay because you have to hold yourself to such a high standard okay if you're going to be showing a product and I suppose these things have been going on for ages I mean look at all the ridiculous shopping channels that have emerged over the years people are still suckers for it now as they have been in the past but strops have been used for hundreds of years and they've been part of producing some of the finest pieces of work far in excess of tea light holders and other such nonsense that you see created now making tea light holders is fun and as long as you're out in the shop having fun that's great but don't dismiss proven reliable methods like the strop you don't have to use them you can definitely just use stones. You don't have to use a strop, it's not essential, but it's been part of the woodworking mainstay for a long time. And be cautious of videos that 
have tabloid headlines suggesting that it shouldn't be. Okay, maybe at some point we'll do a video on the strop, but it's such a basic concept that um, I've got other things to do for the minute. Okay, see you soon.